Chesterfield brings you Dragnet. Put a smile in your smoking. By Chesterfield. Smoother. Cooler. Best for you. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned to Internal Affairs Division. A man who claims he's a policeman has been accepting bribes in your city. Evidence points to the fact that he is an officer. Your job? Check it out. Stop! Start smoking with a smile With Chesterfield Smoother, cooler, milder Chesterfield Put a smile in your smoking Just give them a try Chesterfield's best for you They satisfy When you shop, stop Remember Vacation time is carton time. The cigarette to take with you is Chesterfield, made the modern way, with Accuray. Take along a couple of cartons and put a smile in your smoking. Chesterfield, smoother, cooler, best for you. Remember, in the whole wide world, no cigarette satisfies like Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Chesterfield's best for you, they satisfy. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Monday, April 18th. It was cold in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of Internal Affairs Division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Fulton. My name's Friday. I was on my way into the office, and it was 7.58 a.m. when I got to room 36, the squad room. Good morning. Hi. Ooh. Are we keeping you up? Huh? There's a couch down the hall. Maybe you can use that. Yeah. Remember a couple of months ago, Faye was on that quiz show? Yeah. Yeah, seems I heard something about that. Well, one of the prizes was a dog. You know, they were going to give us a little pup. Mm-hmm. Turned out they were giving away cockers. They're nice dogs. They're thoroughbreds. Mm-hmm. Faye and me talked it over and decided we'd rather have one of those... One of those basset hounds. What are they? One of those dogs with a little short hind legs and long ears. You know, long face, basset hounds. Mm-hmm. I see them in the magazines. You know, they got sad eyes, always look so sad. Yeah. Well, they're hard to get. We had to wait a while. And I got the call Saturday. <laughs> Pup was there. Mm-hmm. I went out and picked him up. Mm-hmm. Named him Hector. Yeah, that's it, Hector. Why? Why? Well, because the old expression kind of fit. Mm-hmm. Since Hector was a pup, get it, Joe? Hector, see, he's still a pup. Oh, Hector the pup. <laughs> I was up with him all night. Mm-hmm. He couldn't sleep, kept whining. Mm-hmm. You still work here, don't you? I just stayed up and kind of hummed to him to comfort him. You still working here? Hmm? Oh. Yeah. Anything come in this morning? Yeah, there's a couple of mug shots over there from Sacramento. Thank you. Boy, sure will be glad to get to bed tonight. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Something we can do for you? Man down room 38, Bunko, told me to come here. Yes, ma'am. De Betta, that's his name, said to see you. Mm hmm. Want to report something? All right, would you like to sit down? Thank you. Now, what can we do for you? I think it's been too long. What's that? Well, I paid for it over a month ago. I'm tired of waiting. You want to tell us about what you mean? Well, Henry should be home by now. It's been over a month. Who's Henry? My husband, Henry Farwell. When I gave the man the money, he said he'd get Henry out of jail right away. That's what he told me. What man? The man who came to see me. Oh, yes, ma'am, but who was he? A policeman. Eight twelve a.m., we continued to talk to the woman. She identified herself as Mrs. Henry Farwell, and she gave us the full story. When did this man approach you, ma'am? 
Oh, just a minute, Mr. Smith. I got it all written down. Ma'am? Got it right here in my bag. Yep, here it is. March 6th. That's when I met him. Where was I? What? Where'd you meet him? He came to the house, my house. Told me he wanted to talk to me about something. Said it was important. Mm-hmm. I didn't know him. There wasn't any reason he'd have anything important to talk to me about. But he said he knew the mister. You mean your husband? That's right. Henry Farwell. Is he in prison? Yes. Been there for three and a half years. We don't like to ask this, Miss Farwell, but it's necessary. Burglary. That's what he was convicted for. Judge told him he'd go to jail for five years to life. Mm -hmm. Was this the first time he's been in jail? I thought so. First, I thought it was all a mistake. They was wrong about the mister. Yes, ma'am. They weren't. Came out in the trial. Seems he'd done the same thing before, twice before. I see. I didn't know about it when we got married. Didn't have any idea. Mm-hmm. The mister's my second husband. Mm -hmm. First one died ten years ago. Woman my age gets lonely. So when Mr. Farwell asked me to marry him, I said yes. Then I found out about the stealing. Miss Mann said he knew your husband, is that That's right? That's right. Told me they met several years ago. Uh -huh. Then he went on to tell me how the mister could get out. What do you mean? The way he told it. If you had friends who knew the right people, you could get out of jail. What's that? If the right people were paid, a man could get out of prison. Uh -huh. And he wanted you to give him some money? Not at first. When he came to the house at the beginning, he didn't even mention it, not at all. When did he bring it up? Oh... About a week later, came over in the afternoon. I was out in the yard, and he said he'd met the people who were important, the ones who could get the mister out of prison. Did he say who these people were? No, just told me he'd met them. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened then? Well, uh, on March 14th, he told me that it could be arranged for the mister to get out of jail. Tell me, did he tell you how this could be done? Well... From what he told me, he'd talk to the right people. That's the way he said it, the right people. I see. If he gave him $5,000, the mister could be turned out. 5000 huh? Yes. I told him I couldn't give him that much, that I just didn't have it. What did the man say when you told him that? Ask me how much I could give him. Mm -hmm. I said if I sold a few things, did what I could to get more money, I, I might be able to pay 3500 well, what'd he say about that? Say it'd be all right? No, no, no. He told me he'd have to go back and talk to the people. Ask them if it'd be enough. When'd you see him again? Two days. He came back. What'd he say then? Told me it'd be okay. The money'd be enough. Mm -hmm. I got it together and gave it to him. That same day? No. No, it was two days later, on March 16th. That's when I gave him the money. I see. And it's been over a month now, and the mister still hasn't been turned out. I wrote to him, but he doesn't say anything about coming home. I don't think he knows anything about it. Yes, ma'am. Now, I don't want to cause any trouble. Just want the mister out of prison, or else I want my money back. You told us this man was a policeman? That's right. In what city? I don't understand. Well, what city did he work in, or what city did he say he worked in? Here, in Los Angeles, right here. Did he show you some identification? Oh, yes. I wouldn't just hand over the money without that. I saw his badge. Mm -hmm. Does it look like this one? Let me see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like that one. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Did he give you a name? Yes. He said he was Jim Sorvell. Sergeant Jim Sorvell. That's S-O-R-V-E-L-L? -L. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'll check it. Mm -hmm. Did you see anything else to identify him? What do you mean? Well, did he show you any other cards, anything else? You mean it might be a wrong name? That's right. Oh, no, I'm sure about that. I wouldn't just hand my money over to anybody. I was sure. Well, how do you mean? I saw his driver's license. Did he tell you where he worked? You mean in what department? That's right. Yes. It's one of the reasons I believed him, because of where he worked. Yeah. Right here in the city hall. While I continued to talk to Mrs. Farwell, Frank put in a call to personnel. Three minutes later, he called me out into the hall. Let me close the door. What do you got? Well, I checked the personnel records. Yeah, what'd you find out? Looks like she was telling the truth. What? There is a Jim Sarvell. City Hall? Well, closer than that. Huh? Auto theft detail. We 
We put in a call to auto theft detail and asked that Sergeant James Servell see us right away. While the victim waited in the squad room, Frank and I took the officer down to the interrogation room. Go ahead, sit down, Jim. Yeah. Thanks. Well, what's this all about? Well, it's a rough one, Jim. We hope you got the answers. Now, give me a try. How long have you been a policeman? Twelve years. How long have you been working auto theft, Jim? Two years this time. I worked there before about five years ago. Uh-huh. Well, what's this all about, anyway? You know a woman named Farwell? Farwell? Mm hmm No, I don't think I do. How about a man, Henry Farwell? No, I don't think so. No, wait a minute. Hmm? Huh? Um, a few years ago when I was working burglary, seems we had a suspect with that name. Yeah. Big guy. Fallen twice before, the way I remember. Bad name around town. Might be the same one. What about him? I already went to the joint a couple of years ago. Well, his wife came in here this morning. Yeah. Says she gave a man $3,500 to get Farwell out of jail. A lawyer? No. Some kind of a deal. This fellow said he knew the right people. Told her a little juice had opened the doors for her old man. Uh, how do I fit into this? Well, this guy told her he was a policeman. Showed her ID to prove it. Uh, what name? Yours. You believe her? Well, no, we don't want to. We figure we get your side of the story first. Well, there's nothing to tell you, Freddy. I had no part in the action. That's the truth. I hope it stands up. It's got to. I don't know anything about the deal, nothing at all. I wouldn't know the woman if she walked in here right now. Well, then you don't mind letting her take a look at you, then? No, no. Bring her in. Right? Yeah. How'd she happen to pick me? You told us the fellow that took her gave your name. Must be a goof up someplace. Mm hmm. You got your driver's license? Yeah. You want to show it to me? Sure. Next line is take it out of your wallet, isn't it? I don't like this any better than you do, Jim. Yeah. Here you are. You got your badge on you? Yeah. You want that too? Well, I don't want to see it. All right. Miss Farwell says the suspect showed her a badge. Says it looked good. I don't think it was mine. Oh. Here. You want to step inside, Miss Farwell? Yes, thank you. All right, Miss Farwell, you know this man? Yeah, seems I've seen him someplace before. Yes. Now be careful and look carefully. Do you know where you've seen him? I'm trying to think. Take your time, be sure. Yes, ma'am. Please be sure. Yeah, hair's a little shorter. He had a mustache before. But I can tell. I can tell for sure. What's that? He's the one that took my money. Mrs. Farwell was taken down the hall where she made a complete report. We continued to interrogate Sergeant James Cervell, but he maintained his innocence. He was suspended from the police department pending an investigation by our detail and the district attorney's office. A week went by. During that time, we talked to Sorvel's friends and the men he worked with. His financial condition was investigated. He owed some money, but he was not behind in his payments. His bank account didn't show any large deposits, and from what we could find out, he was not living beyond his means. If he was guilty, he hadn't spent any of the money that he'd taken. We asked the stats office to make a run on con men who had used a similar approach. They came back with a list of 18 possible suspects. We pulled the mug shots from the packages on the men and we drove out to see Mrs. Farwell. She showed us into the living room of a very small house. Now then, what is it this time? You come to bring my money back? No, ma'am. Well, when am I going to get it? Seems like a long time. The mister's still in prison and I haven't got my money. Yes, ma'am. We'd like you to look at some pictures, if you would. What for? We'd like to see if you recognize any of the men. Sure, I got nothing else to do. Let's see them. There you are, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. All right. Now, looked at the pictures. Now I get the money. No, ma'am. When do I get it? Well, we haven't been able to recover it yet. What? We haven't found it yet. What about that man you got, Sorvel? What about him? Ma'am. Make him tell you where the money is. He took it. Make him tell. From what we've been able to find out, he hasn't got it. Now we get down to cases, huh? What's that? Let's lay the cards on the table. 
I'm getting pretty mad about it. When I first came to see you, I wanted the money back. Either that or to have the mister out of prison. Either one. It didn't much matter which, but I did want one of them. Yes, ma'am, I understand. Now, you've got the man who took the $3,500, got him in jail, and you tell me you can't find the money. Is that right? Yes, ma'am, that's right. You want to know what I think? You want to know? What's that? I think you're all in it together. That's what I think. The whole bunch of you, all in the thing together. That's not true. You say so, but I think different. Now, I'm going to tell you something, Mr. Friday. I'm not going to wait anymore. I want the money back or I'm going to the newspapers again. I'll tell them what's happened. They'll get me some action. Now, just a minute, Miss Farwell. No, I won't. I've done all my waiting already. You think that just because I'm an old woman, you can push me around. Well, you just got another thing coming. I want that money, and I want it right now. And if I don't get it, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. We're doing everything we can to get your money Well, then back. you better start doing more, because I'm not happy at all. All you cops, you stick together. Well, this time, it's not going to do you any good. You don't understand, Miss Farwell. I think I do. Maybe too much. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll give you just three days to get that money back, or I'll scream my head off to the newspapers. You've got the man in jail. Next thing, you'll be telling me he didn't do it. We're not sure he did. Uh-huh. Well, he did. I guess I know. I'm the one he stole from. He's the man, and I want to see him in prison, too. Well, if he's guilty, that's where he'll go. I'm telling you, he is. What more do you need? Just one more thing. What's that? Proof. Frank and I went back to the office and met with Captain Fulton. We laid out the results of our investigation. According to what the victim had told us, we had the right man in custody. But according to the evidence we'd found, it was a case of mistaken identity. Two days later, on Thursday, April 28th, we got a call from a bartender out on Vermont Avenue. Frank and I drove out to see him. Hi. I'd like to see Vince Elkhart. I'm him. What do you want? Police officers. It's Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Oh, yeah? You want to come back here? We can talk. Yeah, fine. All right, what'd you want to see us about? I know I'm letting myself in for a lot of trouble. Anything you guys can do to help me out, I'd appreciate it. But I ain't asking for no special treatment. Well, now, suppose you tell us what it is. Well, night before last, a couple of kids came in. They sat at the bar, ordered a drink. Mm -hmm. Well, they looked kind of young, so I asked to see their ID. Plain it safe, you know. Go ahead. Well, they showed me their driver's licenses. I checked them, looked all right to me, so I served them. Yeah. Guess it made them kind of embarrassed. They only had one and then shoved off. Mm -hmm. There was no sooner out of the place when this guy came up. Told me he wanted to talk. What about? Said the two kids were underage, minors. That I'd served him and the beef was on. Well, who was he? That's why I called you. Maybe I was wrong serving the kids. Maybe I did make a mistake, but I sure ain't gonna stand for no shakedown. Not a penny's worth. This man tried it, did he? Sure. Told me if I paid off, he'd forget what he saw. Well, who is he? Cop. Name of Jim Cervell. a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember this. It's today's biggest cigarette news. Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. The Accuray controller is the greatest improvement in cigarette making in years. And it's a Chesterfield exclusive. This amazing quality detective electronically checks and controls the making of your Chesterfield, giving a uniformity in smoking quality never possible before. So buy Chesterfield today. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column from end to end. A perfect smoke column from end to end. From the first puff to the last puff, your Chesterfield smokes smoother. From the first puff to the last puff, your Chesterfield smokes cooler. From the first puff to the last puff, Chesterfield is best for you. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember... Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. We got a description of the man who tried to blackmail Vince Elkhart. It matched Sergeant Jim Sorvell. While I continued to talk to Elkhart, Frank put in a call to the policeman and asked him to come over to the bar. It took him 12 minutes to get there. He was brought into the place and confronted by the bartender. Would you turn around? Sure. How's that? Uh-huh. Yeah. How about it? 
He hasn't any doubt as far as I'm concerned. No. He's the wrong man. We made arrangements for Vince Elkhart, the bartender, to come down to the city hall and go through the mug books. He was unable to find a picture of the suspect. We contacted CII up in Sacramento and asked them to check their files. Thursday, 5.30 p.m., we returned to the bar. No. Come right down to it. I guess I should have known he wasn't a cop. Should have known it all along. Have you seen this fellow before? I'm not sure about that. Seems like I might have, but I can't be sure. Mm -hmm. We do a pretty good business in here. A lot of people. He might have been around, but I can't name a date or time. Mm. Was he with anybody the night he was in here, do you remember? I don't remember. Matter of fact, I don't even remember him coming in. Just all of a sudden, after the kids left, he was at the bar, tossing me the pitch. Mm -hmm. Really sanded me to think I'd carpet pull a stunt like that. Well, what'd you tell him when he asked you for the payoff? Said for him to get out of the place. That if he was going to make a pinch, to go ahead and do it or else clear out. Did he leave? Yeah. Said I didn't give him any choice. Walked out. Hello. Yeah, that's right. Just a minute. Hey, Vance. Yeah? Catch the phone, will you? Yeah. Excuse me. Huh? Yeah, go right sure, ahead. Sure, go ahead. Hello? Yeah, that's right. Who? Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. I don't know. Yeah. No, I understand. Uh huh. Well, it's nice of you. Sure, I, I thought about it. Okay. Yeah. Goodbye. You guys must live right. Hmm? That was him. The phony cop? Yeah. He'll be right over. Frank and I took up positions in the back of the bar. Twenty minutes later, the suspect walked in. Hi, Elkhart. Hello. Want to give me a Coke high? Sure. Looks like him. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's sure been cold lately, huh? Yeah. Not doing much business. Slow night. Here's your drink. Thanks. Where can we talk? It's all right here. Then what about the two guys in the back? They won't bother anybody. Both gassed. Uh, all right, Alcott, what about it? You mean the payoff? That's right. I talked the boys downtown. They say they let you off the hook for 750 That's a lot of money. Your license is worth more, isn't it? I suppose so. But I got to know what I'm buying. Who are these guys downtown? Well, that doesn't come in, but all you got to do is dig up the money. How high does the juice go? What do you mean? Just that. How far up does the payoff go? All the way to the top. Yeah, we got enough. All right. Yes, sir, you play along with us and you'll do all right. This is him. All right, mister, let's go. What are you talking about? What is this? Police officers, you're under arrest. For what? Suspicion, grand theft, impersonating an officer, and we ought to be able to figure up a couple more on the way downtown. <laughs> oh, hey, you guys are wrong. You made a mistake. Sure we have. Stand still. Oh, he's clean. You're going to be awful sorry about this. Is that right? Sure, I got a lot of friends in town. Some of them pretty high. Mm-hmm. You mind giving me your names and numbers? I want to be sure I got the right dope on you guys. Time I get through, you'll both be working so far out, you'll need a passport to get home. Mm-hmm. Got it all figured, haven't you? Front, back, and in the middle. Yeah. Like reading a story. Well, I don't know about the first part. Yeah. But I can tell you how it's going to end. The suspect was taken down to the city hall. He refused to give us his name, and a thorough search of his person failed to turn up anything to aid in identifying him. His fingerprints were rolled, and while we waited for the results of the check, Frank and I talked to the suspect in the squad room. How long you figure you're going to be able to keep this thing up? I don't know what you're talking about. No, come off it. We've got you dead to rights, and you know it. News to me. Why don't you tell us who you are? I forgot. You know a man named Jim Sorvel? I don't think so. Well, according to that bartender, you said you were Sorvel. Oh, he's got a big mouth. Look, have you ever been arrested? I forgot. You better get your memory back. Why? I got it. I.D. Smith. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Toss me that pad, would you? Here you are. Thanks. All right. Mm. 46? Yeah. Yeah. Right. 52, huh? Okay. All right, thanks a lot. You better get in touch with those big friends of yours. I will when it's necessary. Well, time just came up. We got your record. Hmm? 
Full name, Charles Bobo Kiernan Offner. You've fallen twice in California, once for GTA, once for attempted robbery. There's an outstanding one from Eureka and two from out of state, all three on charges of extortion. Shall I read the rest of it? How about it? You don't have to. I'm in the box. Where's the badge and the driver's license? My place. Where's that? Hotel over on Grand. Where'd you get the badge? Bought it. Guy I know. It's one of the old ones. Mark doesn't know the difference. Yeah. How about the license? Made that up myself. Why'd you pick Sorvel? Looked like a good dodge. A cop who's going to cause trouble. Why him? Tagged a cleaning store out in Highland Park one night. Must be the place where the Sorvel does business. Clerk thought I was him. We got to talking. Things just worked out. What about the prison deal? How'd you build that for yourself? Oh, I know a guy up at Q. He buddies up with a prisoner, gets all the information, and kites a letter out to me, and I pull the swindle. How many times you worked the deal? Collected three. The last one was an old woman. What'd you take? 3500 Just you and the guy up in the joints, that all there is? Yeah. You willing to make a statement? Sure. All right, we'll call a stenographer. Look, can you tell me something? What's that? The two out-of-state beefs, you think they'll extradite me? We don't call it. Why? we would rather do my time here in California. It's nicer here. Yeah. Prettier. Lots of nice scenery in California. It's different. Well, I wouldn't worry. Hmm? You won't see much of it. The story you've just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On July 28th, trial was held in Department 96, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. Now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you, George Fenneman. Chesterfield made the modern way with Accuray. I wonder if you realize what that means to you. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column in your cigarette. A smoother smoke. A cooler smoke than you've ever had before. To put a smile on your smoking, try them. Chesterfield. <laughs> Charles Kiernan Offner was tried and convicted on grand theft money three counts and received sentence as prescribed by law. Grand theft money is punishable by imprisonment for a period of not less than one nor more than ten years in the state penitentiary. Sergeant James Sorbel was reinstated in his duties with full back pay. <laughs> You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Frazier. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Helen Klebe, Than Wyan, Herb Ellis, Jack Crucian. Script by John Robinson. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. Watch an entirely different Dragnet case history each week on your local NBC television station. Please check your newspapers for the day and time. Chesterfield has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles. This is it, l &M Filters. It stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor. l and has got everything. It's the best. Yes, l and has got everything. Everything. Superior taste. Superior tobaccos. Superior filter. It's the miracle tip. Pure and white. Buy L&M. America's best filter tip cigarette. Hear Dragnet next week, same time, same station. <laughs> This is the NBC Radio Network.